Hello all! Welcome back to the Knowledge Tower, where we investigate the science behind the Bionicle legend. In today's investigation, we will be delving into the world of anthropology to try and find the answer to a seemingly simple question. Why do days on Spherus Magna last for 36 hours? Now, you may think that this is a simple question to answer. The number of hours in a Spherus Magnan day came from a fan suggestion to Greg Farshti, based on the great sundial seen in the Matanui Online game. That sundial was divided up into 18 segments, showing 18 hours of daylight and therefore 18 hours of night. Greg canonised this, meaning it was official that it takes 36 hours for Spherus Magna to rotate once upon its axis, just like how it takes 24 hours for the Earth to complete one rotation and why our sundials are split into 12 segments to represent the 12 hours of daylight that this causes. End of video, thanks for watching, right? Well, it's not quite as simple as that. Time as we measure it in seconds, minutes and hours are ultimately a construct of society. Unlike days or years, which are based around the movement of the Earth about its axis or its orbit of the Sun, there is no physical reason why an hour or a second is the length that it is. We as humans simply agreed between ourselves that they would be that way, and then continued on from there. Eventually, we measured time using a physical process, defining the second as the length of time it takes a cesium atom to oscillate 9,192,631,770 times. But that was simply finding a physical process that matched our previous definitions. There was nothing special about that particular measurement. If our cultures had taken a different path through history, we may have split up the day differently too, leaving us with hours and seconds that were of a different length to the ones we know now. In this video, we will take a look at the reasons why humans settled on the system of timekeeping that we have today, and will then apply this knowledge to the world of Bionicle to see why, from a cultural standpoint, the Magnans chose to split their day into 36 segments. And, using the knowledge we have gained, we will extrapolate this out to see if we can define more than just their hours, but minutes and seconds too. Now, just a note before we begin. This video will be looking into the origins specifically of the timekeeping system used in the modern English-speaking Western world. There are still many different timekeeping systems in use today, and even more across history and location, and I would highly recommend looking into them if you want to know more. I went down a deep rabbit hole in my research for this investigation, and the varied ways humans have kept time are truly fascinating. Thousands of years ago, when humans first started measuring time, days and years were generally enough for their needs. By keeping track of those, you could keep track of the seasons, know when to plant crops and when to harvest them. For most early societies, this was enough, and so splitting the day into more refined segments just wasn't needed. However, as early civilizations became more and more complex, they also began to track time more granularly. One of the earliest examples of this comes from the ancient Egyptians, with evidence of that civilization developing sundials to keep track of time throughout the day as early as 1500 BCE. These sundials were split up into 12 sections, most likely due to the fact that Egyptian society at the time counted in base 12, also known as the geodecimal system, rather than the familiar base 10 counting system that we use today. Instead of counting up in tens by counting on the fingers and thumbs on both hands, they instead counted the number of finger joints on each hand. With three joints per finger and four fingers on one hand, that lets you count up to 12 on each hand, counting each finger joint using your thumb. Keep this method of counting by hand in mind as the video goes on. It will become important for the Magnans later on. Without the use of sundials at night, the Egyptians had a system of counting certain stars as the night sky moved above them. By the time of the New Kingdom, from 1550 BCE to 1070 BCE, these had been standardised into a system of 12 stars, which marked the passage of night, another reference to their use of the geodecimal system. This system left them with 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night time, leading to our familiar 24-hour total. These hours were not of a standard length, however, 
with the length of an hour growing in the summer and shrinking in the winter with the changing amount of sunlight received as the seasons passed. It wasn't until the Greek philosophers of the Hellenistic period between 323 BCE and 31 BCE that standard length hours began to be used, with the Greeks requiring a fixed length to the hour to aid them in their study of astronomy. They kept the split of 24 hours in the day, but decided to split those into hours of equal length, basing them upon the equal hours of daylight and darkness that could be observed on the spring and autumn equinoxes. Where exactly this subsequent splitting of an hour into 60 minutes and then a minute into 60 seconds actually happened is not quite so easy to define, but we can see at least some of the steps. The Greeks built upon astronomical techniques that were in use by the Babylonians, who counted in a base 60 counting system that they themselves had inherited from the Sumerians, who developed it around 2000 BCE. Base 60 is another counting method that can easily be done by hand in a similar way to the base 12 method of the Egyptians. In this method, you count the finger joints on one hand with your thumb until you reach 12 as before, but then you count the multiples of 12 you reach with your other hand. With each round of 12 that you reach on one hand, you count up once with your other until you reach 12 times 5 for a total of 60. The Greeks used this base 60 counting across their mathematics, basing measurements of angles on this method, which led to the figure of 360 degrees in a circle that we still use today. Over the centuries, different mathematicians further refined this work and continued to follow the tradition of using base 60. Eventually, each of the 360 degrees of a circle was further split into 60 parts, and then those were split again into a further 60 parts. This first split was known in Latin as minuta prima, meaning first small part, while the second split was known as minuta secunda, or second small part. These eventually became known as minutes and seconds. Then, when the need came to split the hour into even more precise segments, these minutes and seconds were borrowed from geometry to fill the gap, most likely due to clock faces being made of circles. And with that, the modern way of telling the time was finally born. So, how does all this relate to the magnets? Well, as we have already discussed, a lot of human methods of counting that were used in these timekeeping methods include being able to do easy maths by hand, counting in tens because there are ten fingers, counting in twelves or sixties by counting the finger joints, etc. And the magnon sets that were introduced in 2009 had a key feature rarely seen on the sets before. The fingers were clearly depicted on the hands. These hand pieces consisted of three fingers and one thumb each, one less finger than on human hands. And if you count using the Babylonian method of counting the finger joints on one hand and counting multiple joints of those on the other, then that missing finger leads to something interesting. The total number does not come out at 60, like with five-fingered hands, but instead comes out at 36, the total number of hours in a Spherus Magnon day. A coincidence? Yeah, of course it is. But it's one we can exploit to theorise about this topic further. What I'm putting forward is this. Way back in history, when early Magnon civilizations first started splitting up the day into smaller chunks, one of those civilizations counted in this base 36 method. When they were choosing the number of segments that they wanted to split the day into, they chose a number that was familiar to them and easy to keep track of by hand, 36. These hours were either standardised then and there as being equal in length, or this was added as time went on in a similar way to the Greeks, splitting the day into two equal halves of light and dark with 18 hours each, as per the solstices. Over time, this method of splitting the day into 36 equal hours was passed down from culture to culture until it reached the time of the shattering, with the great beings building the great sundial using this timekeeping model. Now, we could end the video there with the explanation of how the canon 36-hour day could have come about, but this wouldn't be a Knowledge Tower video if we didn't delve a little deeper. We have 36 hours, but are these hours the same length as those used by humans? And how would the magnets break those hours down further into minutes and seconds? Let's take a closer look. 
In terms of seconds, we actually do have evidence from Bionicle Media on how long a Magnon second is, and that comes from the view of the Great Telescope from the Matinary Online game. When you look through the telescope in the game, you are greeted with this interface. There are a lot of interesting parts of this, however the number in the top right hand corner of the screen is what we will concentrate on. This is a number that is constantly counting upward and is actually a Matoran text representation of Unix time, a timekeeping method used by computers that is a simple count of the number of seconds that have elapsed since midnight, coordinated universal time, on the 1st of January 1970. This is a neat little easter egg for people who recognise it when they play the game, and the downloadable version of the game currently available sets the date here as the release date of the game in 2001. But what is really key for our purposes is that when viewed from an in-universe standpoint, it confirms that the great beings, and presumably the Magnans as a whole, define seconds to be the same length of time that humans do. Unfortunately, there does not appear to be anything else like this in Bionicle Media that can give us a handy reference for the Magnan definition of how many seconds there are in a Magnan hour, or if they even use minutes at all. Minutes are mentioned in the books, however, and while the books use human timekeeping to make it easier on the reader, let's just take that as evidence that minutes are indeed used in the Bionicle universe. As for the length of hours, I think there is a line of reasoning here that says an hour could also be the same length as a human hour too. And I'm not just saying that so that I don't have to do any awkward conversions whenever the 36 hour day comes up in the calculations of future videos. Though, you know, it certainly does help. If we look at the number of seconds in an hour as defined by humans, we can see that the number comes out at 3600. Notice anything special about that number? It's a multiple of 36. 36 times by 100 to be precise. The reasoning goes like this. When the ancient Magnans decided to split up their hours into even more granular detail, they first created minutes by splitting each hour into 36 further subdivisions, carrying on the practice from how they split up the day. Then, when it came to splitting it even further into seconds, 100 seconds a minute were chosen. Why 100 seconds from a cultural standpoint? Well, we know that by the time of the Great Beings, a system of counting in base 10 was in use, as evidenced by the fact that the numerals that they used when creating the Matoran universe were also in base 10. So, maybe splitting minutes up into 100 segments came naturally to the version of the Magnan society that invented it. Or, perhaps it was initially based on some natural rhythm of their lives that was easy to count and was sufficiently short that it was a useful subdivision of the minute. For example, a human resting heart rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute, so the human heart beats roughly once or twice a second. Maybe the Magnans noticed that their resting heart rate was around 100 beats for each of their minutes and based their second subdivision upon that. This is just one of many possibilities we could speculate on. So, there you have it. We've come to the end of the investigation not only with a reasonable theory on how the Magnans arrived at their 36 hour days, but also a full system of daily timekeeping. 36 hours in a day, 36 minutes in an hour, and finally 100 seconds in a minute. But what do you think? Do you like this explanation for the 36 hour day? What do you think of this idea for their system of timekeeping as a whole? Share your thoughts in the comments, and I will see you next time for another Bionicle Science investigation here at the Knowledge Tower.